UCLA football's it for a big weekend. Homecoming, throwback unis, and Coach Prime coming to town. But maybe more importantly, UCLA basketball also, maybe with some eligibility concerns, unlocked on UCLA. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of the Locked On UCLA Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Anderson, the Oxheimer. Thanks for making the show your first listen each and every day. It's free where we get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. So like, comment, subscribe, review, tell me your thoughts, everything in between if you're an everydayer. We've been talking a little bit about some UCLA basketball, a little bit about some UCLA football, and now we get to dive in deep into this one and break it down for you guys with some UCLA basketball content as well. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College. One word, twenty dollars off your first purchase. This is a great weekend to use that as your first purchase. Go see UCLA Colorado last second tickets, which is where we start keys to the UCLA Colorado game, right? You've got UCLA wearing the sweet, sweet, sweet throwback unis uh, against the likes of the Colorado Buffaloes who are going to bring their energy, their buzz into a prime time nationally televised contest where the Bruins are going to get a chance to showcase against the cross the, across the country, how good they are this year with what we expect to be Ethan Garbers as starting quarterback with potentially a Colin Chile running game with Chip Kelly all but confirming that he is available this week after returning to practice. And then, hey, what does the rest of it look like with a Dante Moore or lack thereof appearance in this game against Colorado? That's a lot of entertainment, a lot of hype. And I just quite don't know. I don't really know how this game is going to play out. I'm going to give you my thoughts. I just feel it'll be a little weird different than what we think, whether it be the spread, whether it be updates. There's ways UCLA can dominate this game, and there's definitely ways where Colorado can make this very interesting to the end if the Bruins don't come to play and the Buffs made some big-time adjustments during their bye week. So with no further ado, let's get to those keys to the game for this one, UCLA versus Colorado. Key number one, if you're looking on YouTube, turnover free football. Turn over free football. Now, that not, might not necessarily be a concern if it's a Garbers-led offense and Schley running the football or just Garbers specifically. Still, Garbers has to avoid throwing a pick. Or if it's Dante Moore, he's got to avoid throwing a pick. We're just going to assume it's Garbers. And he did that again. He did not throw a pick. He did a good job holding on to the football against Stanford and Colorado's defense is pretty, pretty bad. Other than the ability to force turnovers and get interceptions from their opponents. I talked about this in the most recent Locked On UCL episode. But the key is turnover-free football. Colorado is good at their turnover margin because Shadir Sanders doesn't throw many interceptions. Other than that one terrible one that's the lasting memory of the last two weeks against Stanford in the end zone in overtime – it largely, he just doesn't throw it to the opposition and give free possessions back to what could be a tormenting UCLA defense. More in that in these keys to the game. If the Bruins turn it over, despite how bad the Colorado's defense is against Pat against passing, even though the Bruins have a lot of things going for them, Colorado can force turnovers in the biggest parts of the game. And if you come away with zero points, driving deep into the Buffalo's and red zone, then. It doesn't matter. You just have to make sure you play turnover-free football. Got to make sure you take care of the football, and that can make it a lot tougher for a Colorado team that thrives on big plays, which leads us to number two, win big plays. Don't let Sanders, we'll get to that in a moment, scramble out make a big play down the field. Don't let Travis Hunter, the two-way star for Colorado, go down the field, make a big play offensively, make a big play defensively. If UCLA is struggling with special teams, don't let that blocked field goal or missed field goal turn into a big momentum shifting play. That's a lot in a broad term for win big plays. Basically, it can be as simple as a pass breakup. When Sanders rolls out of the pocket, throws a dime down the field, which is going to happen in this game, and you got to break up the pass. That could be a big play. Win those big play moments. Or UCLA having some of their own, whether it's a Garber's run, a pass, whatever it may be, win the big plays in this game. We'll come back and circle the number. I'll have 
big plays, whether it's a big pick in the end zone, maybe it's a 50-yard plus completion or run that changes the scope of the game. A special teams mistake. A lot encompasses in that. But Colorado has won games from big plays, heroic moments, or lack thereof when giving up a big play. When Alec Hale Manor made a big helmet touchdown grab in overtime, that qualifies as a big play because it was one of the best touchdown catches of the year by the Stanford Cardinal wide receiver against the Buffaloes in Colorado's most recent game. Those big play moments, spectacular plays, the buzzy plays, the one that's going to get shared on YouTube, the big 50-yard plus plays, you got to win those moments. It doesn't have to be you need to create 15 of those, five of those in this game. It's if Colorado makes more of those plays and gets hyped on their sideline, they're going to believe and want to compete in this game the more and more there's a suffocating defense, a grinded out running game by UCLA, then the Bruins will have a lot more of an easy time to win this football game, which a lot of people expect the Bruins to do and do so with a wide margin of victory. We'll get to our prediction about that at the end of the episode. Still, UCLA, that's how they can do it. Just kind of slowly put the Buffaloes to bed, gently rock them to sleep in the Rose Bowl, and don't allow the big plays and win those big plays. It can be a pass breakup, everything in between that can lead to a UCLA victory. And our third and final key, if you're looking at YouTube, you can see it, QB pressure. It's not that UCLA won't be able to pressure, but it's the ability to pressure and contain Sanders, who at times, against much worse defensive lines, has been scrambling for his football life. You've heard me say this term before this week. You're going to hear me say it again, scrambling for his football life to make a play. And he can do special things with the football. And the Bruins have to be very good as they have a very good pass, pass efficiency defense. Now, the question is, can they hold up if Sanders is available, is able to abide his time, continue to extend the play, something that Cam Ward was unable to do? DJ did it a couple of times against the Bruins. And Stanford just could not really do anything against the UCLA defense consistently over the entire night. Now, a Colorado team whose offensive line is much worse at protecting their quarterback than UCLA is of theirs, a Bruins D line that is led by Leatu Latu, who wants to be arguably the best defensive player in the country and on national prime time, not only win awards, earn himself some NFL money by dominating an offensive line that's already pretty poor to begin with at protecting Shadir Sanders. A run defense that is so dominant, I don't think Colorado will even snuff out any type of run game in this game so far based on what UCLA's rushing defensive numbers are. QB pressure is key consistently. Don't let this be the game that the Bruins fail. They can't let this be the game that they forget how to rush the quarterback. That's not going to happen. They've got to do it, and containment is key. Pressuring him is one thing, but he's faced that all year. Maybe they're going to do things to switch around protections and key in on Latu, which frees up other guys on the outside to go make a play. You just can't miss the tackle and let him get outside the pocket and make a big play or sprint for a first down. This is where the Bruins' discipline is. Don't get stuck in a rowdy back-and-forth, up-tempo, high-flying, high-octane type of offensive attack. Contain. The more boring UCLA plays in this game, the more likely UCLA is going to dominate and be more impressive. As much as we'd like to see Garbers do something spectacular, a little first down ch chop over there, a little pointing with the arrow, well, whatever it is, maybe it's a spectacular flying interception by Alex Johnson. The more boring the game is, the more impressive UCLA is going to look. The more exciting this game is, Colorado is going to love that. The crazy back and forth, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs, that will fly better with a Colorado style of game than it will for UCLA. Just take the buzz out of the building from the Colorado side and slowly grind it away. And next thing you know, UCLA can win this game by a wide margin and put Colorado to bed with an easier victory. That's easier said than done. Now, again, keys to the game. Turnover free football. Win the big plays. Limit those. Win those offensively, defensively, whatever those are. QB pressure. The boring, the more boring this game is, the better it is for UCLA. That is, I want it to be exciting. I want this to be super fun and talk about something super crazy on Saturday night. But the more boring this is, UCLA will thrive in that game a lot better than Colorado's flair for the dramatic in a game for a team that has a lot of fourth quarter comebacks 
Eight touchdowns, no interceptions for Shadir Sanders in the fourth quarter with many late game heroics, and except that overtime pick. And then you've got a UCLA team that has been dominating teams in the second half. I've already talked about that earlier. They've continued second half dominance, fourth quarter dominance, blitzing teams with the arguably best conditioned team UCLA's had under Chip Kelly. Now let's see that in this game and just stomp the foot down and get the job done. We're going to predict and I'm going to tell you the score. Will UCLA cover the spread? It's kind of changed since the initial line came out. Do they cover? Depends. We'll talk about that. But still, UCLA basketball, some concerns. A couple of guys banged up, missing practice. And, hey, eligibility concerns for the season opener? Let's talk about that next on Locked On UCLA. Have you wondered what it's like to, to dabble in the non-alcoholic beer game? Well, Athletic Brewing's got you. They've got a game changer of the week, UCLA. We're going to expect it's probably something along the like, maybe is it Ethan Garbers again? We'll find out. We'll talk more about that Monday. But you don't need to wait till Monday to go check out Athletic Brewing Company because they've completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. Non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, full of flavor, well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. Their fits for all times. The Bruins in Colorado, you're going to be sitting there like, hey, if the UCLA is going to dominate this game, you want something not boring for the Bruins to win a boring game maybe, you're going to want an athletic brewing company, non-alcoholic brew, because you can watch a big game. You can do it while you're tackling work, working out, make any activity more enjoyable. All you have to do is you can find them at athleticbrewing.com at a store near you, or go, if you're a first-time customer, use the code Locked On 50% off your first order. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, Locked On at checkout for 15% off your first order at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fits for all times. Okay, okay. You want to see what the hype between UCLA and Colorado is all about. You're trying to sneak into the Rose Bowl that's sold out, and you're wondering, how can I get in? Tarps are off. The environment's going to be epic. Big time game. Not supposed to be too toasty in the Rose Bowl. How do you get there? Go to game time because they've got killer last-minute deals. If you want to be a part of that last-minute crowd that sneaks into that UCLA Colorado game with the ticket, go to game time because they've got flash deals, zone deals. You can go see what's the best ticket at a price where the tickets are surging for this game specifically for the Colorado hype train coming into Pasadena because game time gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase and they're obsessed with finding ways to save you money on your tickets, especially flash deals at the last moment. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Use the promo code Locked On College by creating your account, and then use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account. Use the code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Cruising on next segment of Locked On UCLA podcast, we're going basketball because Mick Cronin allowed some reporters to go in. He had a bit of a an open practice, if you will, and it, some questions arose about the health and who is available for UCLA's first official game against St. Francis, November 6th. And then, hey, they've got an exhibition coming up on Halloween. Mick Cronin didn't fully commit to saying that everybody is going to be available. Eligibility concerns of sorts and some guys banged up. Uh, from the reports from both Ben Bolch and Bro Report were saying, hey, Bear K and Dylan Andrews were not a part of practice, a little banged up. Now, is that precautionary? UCLA has been slow in letting a Dembona back, who is now a full go in practice. He's been mostly a full go, and now he should be good to go, even though he hasn't played in a game just yet. Mick Cronin keeps hyping up Dembona's ability and his importance to this year's team for UCLA. Now, what are they going to look like opening night? If you remember, the start of the 2022-2023 season had a dim bone that not available to play because of making sure everything was okay paperwork-wise. That might actually happen now because Mick Cronin did say there's a couple of guys, international freshmen, when it comes to the eligibility and making sure everything's good with the NCAA. And he wasn't saying who it is. Ben Bolch tweeted out and said, hey, something along the like, if it's expected to be 
Adai Mar and Berke, the two later arrivals to the UCLA campus for eligibility, that might be those guys. There was no confirmation for Mick Cronin. Ben Bolchley kind of not leaked it, but talked about that with his idea. And it's coming report who are the eligibility guys. And Berke is already sitting out a little banged up. Dylan Andrews, who's supposed to be the starting point guard, at least to start the season. He gets the first crack at it. It's not helpful that these guys aren't playing. It might make more sense as to why UCLA is not playing with Mara or Berke in that secret scrimmage against Santa Clara, right? That makes more sense. Bona slowly and just finally getting the official forego to go around and practice. These guys can practice and learn and develop overall and again and again. Now will they be available? Again, I'll remind you, Bona didn't play game one and then was available other than health reasons for the rest of the season, and UCLA was able to see him win the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year Award and hopefully many national awards in his sophomore season. Now, McCronin kind of talked about the timing of everything is different. He's hopeful that those guys might be available to play, but there's an injury bug and eligibility concerns. That's something that you want to keep your eye on. Now, will it take long? Is it weirder? Because UCLA's got these guys accepted. Remember, Adai Mara had the weird uh, separation from Zaragoza, and that's been an off-and-on topic not really discussed recently. Berke had to battle and grind his way into UCLA a, la a year later than the Bruins would have wanted him. They actually wanted him for last year's team. Remember, the Bruins had to go after a Turkish big man in the previous year, I believe, Ejia Demir, if I'm getting the name correct, probably butchering it. He couldn't even get eligible to play. So UCLA has had problems before getting guys immediately ready to play game one or overall. It's a little different to bring guys into school officially. But now you've got Mara there on campus. You've got Better K. And I know there's still Jan Vide and Ilan Fible. There's so many different ways UCLA can have guys maybe eligible or not eligible. But it's not confirmed as to which of the guys it is. So I'm not going to tell you, oh, Mara and Better K are not playing. It, it's two of the four international freshmen that are having issues. Maybe not issues, but a little bit of waiting into when can they officially play. Will it be not game one or game two? Will it be game one that they're good and we're just waiting and making a whole big thing? But that question was directly asked to Mick Cronin in his recent presser, and he wouldn't come out and say, it's happening. I am hopeful that they'll all play for the exhibition against Cal State LA. He did not fully expect that everybody will. That's not a promising sign just for the exhibition. I know you want to rest guys and not have everybody out for those games. Still, UCLA can grow and build with all those things moving forward into the next part of the season. So maybe that's why these guys were out, not playing against Santa Clara. Maybe we're going to see how long it takes to grow this team. Mick Cronin was even asked about, hey, what's it going to take to build this team? How do you teach defense to seven freshmen, eight newcomers, and a lot of guys growing into new roles. Again, McCrona's message is simplify, simplify, simplify. The big question mark. I don't think there's been a weird question mark about a team as much as there's been for UCLA's team heading into this season. Nobody knows. I still like to believe that they're a top 25 team when el everybody's eligible, healthy, and ready to play with McCrona's wide array of players he can use. I'd like to believe that they're a top 25 team, despite multiple publications, multiple preseason rankings, saying that UCLA is just outside that. They'll make the tournament. Joe had already had them go up and down. They dropped in the most recent bracketology down to a seven seed. There's and playing in the end in the first round. Speak of blue blood programs battling it out in a first round NCAA tournament game. That would be epic. There's so many weird questions about this team heading into this season. It's just truly hard to put a pin on. I'm not even sure Mick Cronin knows. He just wants to go play a game so he can make adjustments. And as he talked about, he's paid to win. Development in the summer, development in the preseason, even though he didn't get all his players healthy and ready to go and in camp like Mar and Better K as soon as he would have liked or Bona being healthy. Those were struggles to get all those wound up until the fall quarter began in Westwood. Now it's going to be a big on-the-fly corrections and retractions and building and growing and developing where if UCLA comes out flying, that's scary because that means UCLA still can get even better. Now there will be some growing pains, and it will be a unique time for UCLA this year with the extended active home winning streak. Some big-time games they're going to play in Honolulu. 
and a fairly easy three games to start the season where if they struggle, the, the, the sirens will silent, will somewhat go off and be like, wait a minute, why is UCLA struggling with this team at home? Last year, they dominated. This year, we'll find out. Those questions will be answered, so on and so forth. But still, it's not official, but two of the four international freshmen are not yet officially eligible. Thought to be from Ben Bolch, Mara, and Barricade. But Barricade was also one of the couple of guys Mick Cronin said, or didn't say, when they went to practice, all the everybody, that Dylan Andrews and Barricade were not practicing due to a couple of injuries or banged up, as Mick Cronin would say. So no confirmation, but still, when you're going to lean a lot to your freshmen, especially on the international freshmen, you like them to be eligible and playing game one so everybody can gel together quickly before Honolulu, before the non-conference games in December, and then the conference games in the last year of the Pac-12, as we know it, in December into 2024, hopefully for a strong Bruin run. I expect this team to get red hot and loaded by the end of the season. Until then, eligibility concerns a little bit. There might not be a full available UCLA squad for the exhibition, as we might hope, or even game one on November 6th. Now that's not confirmed. That's an ongoing process, and we know ongoing process can take forever. I know that the situation with Tez Walker was a little different for North Carolina, but look at that, right? Everything pointing in the, the right direction, the, the story, everything building, and them calling out the NCAA, and it still took them a long time to let him become eligible with all the transcripts and information and everything. So if you think the NCA won't flub this up, let's pause and be like, wait a minute, there's a lot of things going on here. So much different paperwork, weird jargon coming over from this area. Go to the deal for Mara, Barricade having to come over a year later and everything. If those are the two guys specifically we're worried about, even Jan Vide and Elon Fible, even though they've been committed and ready in Westwood for a much longer time than the other two, there's a lot that the NCAA could still mess up. Not that it's going to happen. There's many ways it could happen, and we need to be ready for that in case it does. Because even Bona didn't play game one in 22-23. That didn't affect the rest of his season. We'll see how many games, if any, that affects moving forward for UCLA at the recording of this podcast. I can't predict the future for that, but I will give you my thoughts about UCLA versus Colorado. It's prediction time so let's talk about it coming up next you guys have got to go try out prize picks because they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports you're not playing thousands of other guys or ladies or whoever right you're not playing a thousand other players whatever all across the globe it's you're not playing a shark. You're not playing a professional. You against the numbers. Do you think you can beat the numbers? More or less. That's all you got to choose on two to six player stat projections. And your winnings can roll in if you're that good. It's not a bad fantasy football week when you're sitting there and your team is outscoring every other team except the team you're playing It's No. If you expect this person to put up big yards, big numbers, then go click the button and do that because prize picks can be really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in about less than 60 seconds. And you've got an enormous selection of players. They've got injury assurance. So if it's like, oh, man, I forgot to sit this guy because he got hurt. And right before the game, I didn't check it in time. They've got injury insurance for college football and pro football. Go check it out because all you got to do is go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the code Locked On College for first deposit match up to $100. PrizePicks.com slash Locked On College. Use the code Locked On College for a deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Prediction time for Locked On UCLA. This is going to be a segment where everybody gets mad at me again. I'm going to tell you now because I've been generally. Very bad this year at getting scores correct and how close the games are. And funny enough, I've actually predicted UCLA to win every game. Wrongfully twice at Utah and at Oregon State. UCLA could have won that Utah game. Different things could have happened maybe in Oregon State. So those are winnable games, not full terrible outcries for me like I probably did last year. Still, UCLA, I've 
for, I fortunately or unfortunately picked them to win every game this year. And that's that going to change with Colorado coming into town, UCLA expected to beat Colorado. Well, there's di- a couple different spreads in this game. You know, I'm looking at FanDuel right now, and there's an alternate spread where if you're doing a full parlay, you can get UCLA minus 13 and a half. And that is a unique one, right? Minus 13 and a half. It started, I believe, UCLA 16, 17 point favorites. It's coming down to, if you get an alternate spread, less than two touchdowns potentially, or two touchdowns for UCLA to be a full favorite. Now, the one full game line spread I've looked at and seen, UCLA 15 and a half, which is a little less than 17. And the difference between the alternate spread and the, the spread that's being posted right now, me looking at FanDuel, is what I'm going to post with this score. Bear with me. Outrage is allowed to happen starting now because I just think this game's going to be weird. I want it to be boring for UCLA to dominate. I want it to be exciting because the sheer entertainment value of this game is going to go through the roof because it's national televised. Colorado is going to do something wacky. Uh, it's just going to happen that way. It, some The mixture of the two, boring and wackiness, is going to turn into what I think this final score will be. I trust the UCLA defense to do things. I trust the Bruins in the hands of a, a Garber, Schley, Moore, whatever combination it will most likely be Garbers, despite the lack of a public starting quarterback commitment from Chip Kelly at the point of this recording. Schley apparently available to, to run some segment of the offense of some sort if Kelly wants to use him. And I think Colorado is funky enough offensively to score a couple of points and a couple of touchdowns on UCLA's defense, despite what they've shown this year. Here we go. Outrage begin now. UCLA, let's get the, there we go. There's our little graphic. 31-17. 31-17 is my thoughts in this game, right? Back and forth if you're watching on YouTube. I'm not going to show it to you because you're going to get mad. One more time. UCLA 31. Colorado 17. Is that because Colorado's going to get a pick or two? I do think they may get an interception. Regard, They will force a turnover. I think the Colorado defense will force a turnover. I would like to think UCLA in their eighth straight game will force a turnover. I'm not confident they'll pick off Shadir Sanders. I do think they can get more fumble luck or dominance by forcing another fumble and recovering one. And I think the turnover battle will be fairly even. And that turnover UCLA gives up to Colorado might lead to a score. Colorado will go down the field a couple of times, settle for a field goal, and then score a touchdown. Again, we go back to those keys in the beginning of the pod, turnover free football, win big plays, QB pressure. I think UCLA might not play completely turnover free, but that's what they need to do to dominate this game. And if I talked about the spread, that's 15 and a half. So I don't think UCLA covers, even though everything on paper says they should. I just am wondering what Colorado's coming off of a bye after a frustrating, terrible home loss to a cellar-dwelling Stanford team with a a Colorado team that's got an extreme flair for the dramatic regardless of who they're playing outside of the Oregon game. And we know the Rose Bowl is not Otson Stadium in terms of the UCLA environment, but it will be buzzing with the great uniforms and everything in between in this game. The Terry Donahue statue being unveiled at the Rose. Everything is coming for UCLA in this game. So maybe the Bruins thrive off the buzz and win this game 52-7. to I don't know. I'm not going to fully commit to that at this moment. I do think UCLA wins this game. Maybe Colorado makes it interesting. They get down 31 to 3 or 31 to 7, and they make it 31 28, and the Bruins win close. I don't know. I just think if you get that alternate spread and you're doing a parlay, you get UCLA minus 13 and a half, hit that button, right? If you're getting 15 and a half, I just don't know. I'm just not fully confident in UCLA doing that against Colorado. I think they'll win. I think they can be in control with the defensive line. I can throttle most of the game against an offensive line that struggled to keep people out of the backfield and chasing down Shadir Sanders. Now, is that going to happen every single game against a vaunted passing attack that's one of the best in the Pac-12, which is already a very pass-happy conference with Bo Nix. You've got Caleb Williams. You've got Michael Penix Jr. You've got quarterbacks that throw the football all over the conference. Colorado's amongst that offense that can toss it around. I do think they'll score a couple touchdowns on the UCLA defense. But I do think the Bruins defense will still be very successful today because 17 points in the grand scheme of things is not too bad. 
Although it'll be closer than we think. That is my thought. It is not going to be a blowout, even though they've got similar numbers and metrics like Stanford. I would like to believe this game will be closer and weirder and more entertaining than it should be in ways that I just can't fathom at this very moment recording this game. And what it will be, is it a funky, bouncing, missed extra point turning into a two-point conversion that's blocked or something weird? Or is it a, I don't know. This game is going to have something truly wacky happen. And that's easy to say in college football, but it will be one of those games where it's just like, what? And I still think UCLA comes out on top like they should. And we'll have fun watching Colorado on the Rose Bowl in their only trip to Southern California during the regular season. Which is why you're going to want to stay tuned for that reaction podcast after the game when we talk about it if you're an everydayer. Or if you're just new to the pod and you want to hear me rant and ramble and emotionally react to that game, you're going to want to watch that episode too after the UCLA Colorado game. So get your hands up, Bruins fans. A clap time. I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, signing off. Again, the prediction, 31-17 UCLA over Colorado. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, U, C, L, A, U, C, L, A, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.